Drinking water is a vital part of our everyday lives. Now, there are plenty of visible sources of where we actually get that water from, such as reservoirs and rivers. But the majority of water we drink actually comes from underground. But how does this groundwater get here? How do we get to it? And how do we treat it? In this video, we explore all this and more. understand more about groundwater, we need to explore the water cycle. The water we drink starts its life as rain, which falls on hills, fields and forests, seeping down into the ground and eventually making its way into aquifers, filtering down through cracks in the rocks over tens, hundreds and even thousands of years. Aquifers can store billions of litres of water. But why is groundwater such a useful resource? Groundwater is filtered by the earth itself and is therefore of a natural high quality. Because of this, it usually needs less complex and energy intensive treatment compared to water taken from reservoirs or rivers. Importantly, groundwater aquifers have enormous storage capacity, many times larger than surface reservoirs. This means groundwater gives us resilience in drought conditions. This is part of the reason that hosepipe bands in the Wessex Water region are a very rare event. We work with farmers and landowners in our catchment areas to help manage raw water quality at source. So Hannah, as a water company, what are the kind of substances that we need to manage to ensure the quality of our groundwater? So there are quite a lot of substances we need to, to manage, but um, some of the key ones would be nitrates, pesticides and bacteria. So once those substances end up on a field like this, how do they then get down into our water table? It's mainly leaching with nitrates, for example. You'd have your nitrates sat in the soil and then over the autumn winter when we get rainfall and the soils become saturated and started to drain down to the chalk, which we're then abstracting at our source. That might be months or years after they've left the soil. How does Wessex Water work with those landowners, those farmers, to actually ensure that those catchments are managed? So we spend quite a bit of time identifying where the catchment is and then we can go in and talk to those farmers, improve efficiencies to ensure that their nutrients and pesticides stay in the soil for that crop rather than leaching down into the chalk. There are two main ways we extract groundwater. Firstly, springs. Springs occur where groundwater is found close to the surface, making it relatively easy for us to collect. Secondly, boreholes. Boreholes are required to access water locked in aquifers deeper in the ground. They are drills using specialist equipment and are essentially deep shafts that can extend over 100 metres into the earth, tapping into the porous rock below. I met Principal Hydrogeologist Mike at a borehole treatment site to find out more about how we treat water coming from this source found deep underground. So Mike, you brought us into one of the borehole kiosks. Is this the only borehole on site? So this is one of a, a series of boreholes on site. This particular borehole provides up to about four megalitres of water per day. All those metres below our feet, what's going on? Below this head plate, um, there simply is a, a, a large steel tube set into the aquifer down to 20 metres and that, that keeps any shallow contamination and ingress out of the borehole. Below that, it will be open into one of our principal aquifers, which is the upper chalk, and that's nice and fissured, get lots of clean, abundant water from the chalk. And then slightly below that is another aquifer. It provides a top up to the chalk during the dry summer months. Is there any kind of filtration happening at this stage for this borehole? There will be a small screen inserted into the base of the borehole and then outside that a uh, gravel is inserted and that keeps any of the really coarse material out. Once we've extracted the water out of the borehole, we measure its turbidity to find out how many particles such as fine sand or chalk are suspended in the water. Groundwater is naturally of a very high quality but in order to remain safe on its journey to your homes, there is a requirement to treat it with a small amount of chlorine. 
So that's it for how we extract and treat water from boreholes. But what about those sources that emerge closer to the surface in the form of springs? To find out more, I'm off to a treatment works that specialises in treating spring water. So Ed, you've brought us to an open spring chamber here. We can see lots of culverts. Can you explain what's going on in there? So each channel is collecting the spring water from under the hill. So the ones which are closer to us are shallower and as they go back they get deeper into the hill um, and the more flow we get out of them. And how much water does this spring produce? This particular spring set, when the water tables are very high, we can get about 1.2 megalitres a day out of it. During the summer months or very sort of dry or hot spells, and that significantly reduces and we, and we tend to get about half a megalitre. So Ed, we're obviously taking a little bit of water out of the surface groundwater table here. Is there any way that we compensate for that? We have a stream that runs down through the valley here. So one of our spring sets here does have a compensation flow on it. Is there any reason why this needs more treatment than boreholes, say? Because it is closer to the surface, we don't have that natural filtration that boreholes would give you. So yes, we generally would, on a spring site, have more processes involved with it. After treatment in the spring water site, the water is then pumped to various underground storage reservoirs in the local area ready to go to our customers' taps. We are custodians of our groundwater sources, not owners. And as such, we have to look after them. Taking out too much can have consequences downstream. Plants and trees rely on underground water sources, and streams and rivers, with their delicate ecosystems, need to be continuously topped up with groundwater to maintain healthy flows. The reality of the effect of climate change on our weather means longer dry spells, followed by short, intense rainfall. Because groundwater is more resilient to drought compared to surface reservoirs, we need our aquifers now more than ever. Extracting responsibly from groundwater is still one of the best ways to get clean, fresh drinking water. And as long as it's managed carefully, groundwater will be a vital resource for years to come.